Welcome back. In the last video, we had a look at NumPy's random number generator and how it's random, but we can use NumPy's random seed method to make it not so random and create pseudo random numbers. Now we're going to have a look at different ways of viewing arrays and matrices. There we go. Shift and enter. Remember, we're making markdown cells so that our notebooks are beautifully formatted. And actually, before we jump into that, how do you think we'd find the unique numbers in these arrays? Maybe this one is a bit better because that's got integers. These are all floats here and they're way too long. But how would we find the unique numbers in random array four? Let's have a practice of how we might do that. So we'll open up a tab and we'll go how to find unique elements in a NumPy array. Beautiful, that's pre-filled. So it's gonna take us to the documentation numpy.unique, find the unique elements of an array. Wonderful, that's what we're after. So if we go down in the documentation, you'll see down the bottom, there's examples. Now this is what we're after. This is the process you can go through. Say someone came to us and was like, hey, you've got your random array four. I need the unique numbers from that. So we find the documentation, we'd come to the example section, or we just read it to see if it does what we need. Then we'd have a look down here. So they've got an array A, MP unique A array. It shows the unique numbers there. Well, let's have a look. Let's practice. MP.unique. And remember, if we hit shift and tab, we've got information here. Find the unique elements of an array. Wonderful, that's what we're after. So we're gonna pass it random array four. Random array four. Shift and enter. And what this has given us is 0, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9. If we come up here, and that is because we created random array 4 using rand int, passed it 10, so that means it'll use the numbers between 0 and 9 of size 5 and 3. So we can see the uniques, we haven't quite got all the numbers between 0 and 9. We're missing 2, we're missing 7. Beautiful. But that's just a quick little tidbit of how you might find a function using NumPy. You might come across the documentation. Stack Overflow is another resource that you'll often come across, but that's the steps you'll take. Now let's get into section three, viewing arrays and matrices. So we've got our arrays, A1, A2, we created these earlier, A3. Now viewing arrays and matrices takes a bit of practice and creating them of course too but if what you're seeing in this section how to view them is a little bit confusing to start don't worry i still get confused the important point is to start practicing so if we wanted to see element zero in a1 we could use zero indexing so let's try that beautiful let's go the same for a2 wonderful now this is going to give us this first row here why is that well, if we go above here, a2.shape. Okay, so it's got two rows. So that makes sense. We're indexing into the first element of the shape. Now let's try a3. a3.shape. This is 233. Let's get a3, 0. Wonderful. But if we have a look at all of a3, so it's giving us back the first row. So if we see here, 2, 3, 3. And A30 is giving us back this first matrix or first array. And remember the anatomy of our arrays and matrices. Although this is still a NumPy array, it can be referred to as a matrix. And this is where some of the terminology gets a bit confusing. Usually a one-dimensional array is referred to as a vector, but anything more than one-dimensional is referred to as a matrix, but is also of type array. So that's the important thing to take away is that a array is still this, but anything with more than one dimension is a matrix. Let's have a look at some more indexing. So we go A2, maybe if we wanted index one. So we'll have a look at our array again. Index one, what will this give us, do you think? Shift and enter, ah, so it's given us position one. So let's try again. Let's do a bit more of a complicated one. We can use slicing with arrays too, which is beautiful, just like Python lists. Maybe we want the first two values of A3. 
So we want the first two values of each row, column, and array. So let's try that. First two values of each shape. What do you think this will give? So let's have a look. So we got the first two and the second two, which is one, two, four, five. So it's this section. And then we got the final two, which is 10, 11, 13, 14. Ah, beautiful. Now remember, doing this kind of indexing, depending on how many dimensions your arrays have, will take some practicing here. So best to just experiment, create some arrays and start playing around. What if we did something like this? You'd get an error because there's too many indices. The reason why we can only do three is because of A3's shape. There we go, two, three, three. Let's try one more. We'll create A4 equals random dot rand. Oh no, we need numpy at the front here. Random dot rand int. We'll do 10. And this time we'll make it a four dimensional array. Two, three, four, five. We want to see it, shift and enter. Size is not defined. Oh, we keep forgetting to push equals here. That's all right, you'll make some errors too when you're learning to code here. Okay, so A4, we've got a fair few numbers here. We can scroll right down. So if we did A4.shape and then A4.ndim, the shape is two, three, four, five. We kind of knew that. So two by three by four by five, yep. And the dimensions is four. So this is a four dimensional array. Remember, n dimensions can go up to any number you can imagine. So how would we get only the first four numbers of this vector here? Hmm. Let's have a look at this size. So NumPy displays arrays from the outside integer inwards. So let's have a look at this. This might be a bit hard to understand, but with some practice, you'll start to see. So we got five here. So the furthest element on the right, the furthest of the shape gets displayed on the innermost section. So five, there's five numbers here. And then four, the next section is this section here. So there's one, two, three, four. Yep. Yeah. And then three. So there should be three, one, two, three. Yep. Yeah. So one, two, three. And then two. So there should be two in the largest, so the outermost brackets. So this, this is three, and this is three here, so there's two there. Remember, visualizing these is very hard to understand when you first begin, so if you're having some trouble, try to create some random arrays with different shapes, and then start to count backwards from the outermost number on the innermost displayed array. But let's see, how would we get the first four numbers of the innermost array. So that's the innermost here, number five. So what we could do is slice these first three dimensions and then slice this one. We only want the first four. So let's try that. A4, slice all of dimension one, slice all of dimension two, all of dimension three, but only up to the first four numbers of dimension four, shift and enter. Wonderful. So that only gives us the first four numbers of the innermost dimension. And if we got rid of that to three, that to two, there we go. We can start to see how we can really slice and dice our arrays and, and matrices to give us back any kind of numbers that we might wanna see. All right, now we've seen a few different ways to create arrays. We've seen a few different ways to index them and view them. And remember, I'm using the term array and matrix independently. You can use them independently yourself. What we're gonna do next is figure out how to manipulate and compare different arrays, which is the crux of what machine learning does to find patterns in numbers. So have some practice, take a little break, try out a bit of slicing, create your own array and see different ways of viewing it. And I'll see you in the next video.